so here's a real quick one this morning um, while I'm trying to wake up. <laughs> the metronomes here, you can see they're out of sync. And then when you put them on a loose surface, okay, where you're allowing the momentum to adjust naturally, they find a synchronization rhythm, and that is due to the looseness of the bass. Okay, so I noticed with the uh, vortexes in the turbos when it runs away that usually there's something that breaks and it, that's what I noticed personally in my experience of what had happened when I saw this myself. It was the turbo uh, impeller, one of the impeller's bearings, um, it, it broke loose. Um, and when it was loose and uh, moved more freely, I know bearings are supposed to make it move more freely, but I think it had some kind of um, restriction on it or some kind of governance, or maybe the impeller itself was impeding it. Maybe it was a dampening mechanism. But once it was uh, abated as far as its designed function, then the turbo seemed to work more efficiently and, and it ran away and blew up. Um, so, and then here you set it down and then it goes back out of sync. So, uh, with that in mind, I was thinking about the jet engines and how um, there is a... Uh, there's he dropped about 15 or 20 feet off the ground. It was pretty, pretty rough. I mean, the landing gear is amazing how it can handle that. But, um, you know, it's these, these vortices, they tell the tale. When you hit a golf ball, you know, you think of, you'd think the ultimate club for distance would be a 45 degree angle, but that's, that's not true at all. That is going to give you short distance. Uh, the longest drivers in golf, uh, like the pros, you know, they're hitting drivers that are you know nine degrees seven degrees of loft so the launch angle and then they're not swinging up on it you're actually pinching down on it with your golf club you're actually on the downstroke and the reason is and you're launching off at such of a low angle but you get backspin on it which creates a vortex uh, in the front and mostly above the ball but kind of to the front and, and you, if you watch it in slow motion, you know, the ball comes off at a very low launch angle and then the vortex carries it up. So you're, you're trying to get as much forward motion as possible. So it's coming off the tee at an at a angle of maybe nine degrees, okay? And then it lifts up and it goes up past what would have been a 45 degree ballistic shot and then it drops back down and it's the vortex that's doing it. So that's where, you know, I think the answers are to these mysterious instances of the planes, you know, seeming to hover or actually hovering in midair or even going backwards. It's because they're basically functioning like, well, like a helicopter, but like a, like a bumblebee or a hummingbird. You know, they're just sending a vortex over top of the wings and, um, and, and then they don't need that forward motion. They're not getting the lift the way that they taught you in school. They're getting the lift from this strike effect. The next best thing to being able to fly fast is being able to fly slower, safely. And these, uh, these little metal tabs are called vortex generators, and they make tiny little horizontal tornadoes that allow the airplane to fly at a higher angle of attack and a slower airspeed so that it stalls slower. These vortex generators are a kit that comes from a company called Micro Aerodynamics. And they supply the kit and the template and everything that's needed to install them. The templates are already made. You don't have to do a lot of measuring. You just lay out the templates on the wing. It shows you where to, where to attach the vortex generators and then you just glue them. Glue in the morning to get some baseline measurements. Um, laid out the kit, installed it, and then flew again in the afternoon, and the airplane was much changed.
that the, normally the wing would stall at about 16 degrees angle of attack. And uh, with the Vortex generators, that number is over 20. The RV has a pretty gentle and benign stall characteristics to begin with. And I was concerned that adding Vortex generators might change that. Um, in fact, it's, it's really improved the stall characteristics because it still stalls straight ahead just like it used to, but it gives a little more aerodynamic warning, a little more buffeting before the stall break actually happens. The angle of attack is increasing, the airspeed is slowing, yet the uh, tufts remain pressed hard against the top of the wing. But watch closely as the stall takes place, they separate right now, all at once. And the spin characteristics have not been changed by the vortex generators. The only difference is that the stall happens at a higher angle of attack and a higher pitch attitude. But once the spin develops, it's just the same as it was before. And there is absolutely no reduction in cruise speed as a result of adding the vortex generators. This kit cost a little under $400. And the difference in how the airplane flies is astonishing.